So welcome back again to the uh, next installment of the Survival Works blog here. Today we're going to start uh, with taking a look at uh, the construction of fire building and uh, a lot of times when people want to get a fire going they have the image in mind of the end result which is great. Uh, sitting by the fire, cooking something, being warm, uh, that's usually a sizable fire um, and so people don't realize kind of how small you really have to start. And we're actually going to step back even further than that and just to say uh, how do you know where to go on the landscape to choose the materials? Uh, there's definitely some places where you throw a match and uh, fire erupts all around you, but here in the Northeast that's not really the case. You actually have to do a little bit of um, uh, tracking and strategic hunting to find the best materials. So uh, I have behind me here uh, a wonderful tree that some of you may recognize if we pan up here into the treetop. Got a very nice soft delicate kind of uh, set of needles up there bundled together in clusters of five. So this is uh, the white pine. Uh, and this is true of many conifers is that the lower branches uh, begin to die back as the tree matures, gets older. It sort of shades itself out. So going to the conifers as a starting point is a great place to begin. Uh, you get a, a whole assortment of nice dead branches. And it uh, doesn't take long to get a bundle. Um, very dry, good coloration. If I had a match though, and I, I took a match and I stuck it to this pile here, you can kind of uh, see that this match is very tiny in comparison to what I have here. And uh, you'll just have to trust me, but I'll show you later that this actually probably won't light. Even, even this size diameter sticks are actually too big to get the fire going. So even though I'm going to burn these later, what I really need to focus on is very, very, very thin diameter, not short, but thin diameter uh, wood. So again, looking back up here, I can start to pick my way a little more carefully through and start selecting just the finest, uh, wispy style quality um, twigs off of here. And if I get enough of these, I'll be pretty close in no time to being able to uh, get a fire going. So it'll take me a little while, but I'm gonna focus on this because then these actually have a chance of lighting from a single match. So this is one place I come to. Um, what if you don't have conifers or white pines, where else can you go? I mean, the forest is filled with, with wood, obviously, um, but there's lots of different things to be found. Some is alive still, some is uh, some are dead, but have a lot more moisture in them. So this time of year, I'm gonna show you another thing that will trick you, uh, or at least get you in trouble, is um, before the leaves come out and the buds and such, you may not be able to tell if something is alive or dead. And So what I'll do is I'll just take my nail and just dig lightly into it. If uh, if I see green in there of any kind, I know that this is live and I don't want to have to break off branches just to find that out. So just a tiny little nick like that is one way. Also the, the suppleness of the branches, if it's got bend in it, then probably alive. Down on the forest floor down here, um, lots of materials that you could harvest, right? Uh, if fire making is new to you, you may just start grabbing things at random, but the thing to think about is that uh, the life is kind of coming from the ground. Uh, it's fed by uh, the water that's in there, the moisture. So basically things on the ground tend to have more moisture content and therefore don't burn as well. So if I had to pick down here, I wouldn't pick things uh, right off the ground. I would actually start picking things that were hovering a little bit off the ground, airflow, uh, sun exposure. So basically what I'm saying is, you know, don't, don't take it for granted that a stick is a stick. Just get out there and start experimenting, um, breaking them, listening to the sounds, uh, even feeling them with your hand. You know, when you do laundry and you pull something out of the dryer and you're testing to see if it's really done or not, you can a lot of times just kind of, you know, it's that frustrating point where it's almost there but not quite. If you trick yourself into thinking that that wood is good enough, uh, you're going to have a smoky fire or a struggle kind of burning it. So uh, feel it. Uh, listen to it. You can touch it to more sensitive parts of your body like your lips and feel for moisture content there. Um, but start very, very small. Gather just small, 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 fine, wispy materials. Um, in a little bit we'll take you over and we'll sort of show you the construction of it. Uh, on the landscape, think about exposure. Uh, where does the sun rise and where does the sun shine? Uh, that has a lot to do with what dries out. Think about where the wind is coming from and how those materials are being affected by uh, the elements. And all of these things are kind of just big picture thoughts that go into where to best gather firewood materials from. Great, so uh, 
ask you to get out there and uh, it, whether you're practicing with friction fires or whether you're practicing with matches, lighters, flint and steel, magnesium, it doesn't really matter. In the end, you still have to know how to use the materials that you've gathered and put together. Uh, and so, recommend you just get out there and you start experimenting with what you find and uh, take notes, send them my way, I'd love to hear what you find out. So thanks very much and we'll see you again uh, next time.